This is the story of a family, part of the ruling class of Hollywood, for decades, nothing out of reach. The most beautiful nights, the most beautiful houses from the lush gardens of California to the 247 acres on the cliffs of Mallorca, Spain. And all around, all those beautiful people. It's strange growing up seeing your father and grandfather as giants projected on screens and billboards. How do you compete with Kirk Douglas? How do you live in Michael Douglas's shadow? Michael! Michael, what's happening? A child of that family is standing in the hall, getting ready to tell the story of how far he traveled before he could see his way back home. Three years ago, Cameron Douglas was released from prison. I hate to keep a beautiful woman waiting. Well, thank you. Now 40, he was confined seven years behind bars, including in maximum security and nearly two years in solitary confinement. Do I have this right? When you were 13, you were smoking pot. When you were 15, you were snorting cocaine. When you were 17, you had sampled crystal meth. 19, liquid cocaine. 26, heroin. How close were you to dying? Probably pretty close. We said, I was playing a game of chicken with myself. Is it a kind of miracle? You're OK? I like, I like the sound of that word. <laughs> it sounds good. We'll see, if, we'll see if I can turn it into that. I think that, that remains to be seen. As Cameron Douglas talks, it's hard not to be distracted. <laughs> Look at the faces of the three generations, that dynasty of Douglas men. My father. My father. My father is... The family's signature, a kind of tough glamour. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. His father, a powerhouse producer, hit-making actor. <laughs> and his grandfather not only played the invincible Spartacus, he was the star who made 87 films, including that huge hit 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I show Cameron a documentary. His father and grandfather remember that famous song. Let's swap in fish and the girls I knew. I'd like this with the moon above. We love a tail and it's all true. I swear by my tattoo. <laughs> He's amazing. The kind of hopeless admiration he says he felt as a little boy watching those award shows from home and hoping to live up to the family name. My cook got cooking well. He said, I wanted to impress him. I wanted him to be my friend. I revered him. And good night, Cameron. I love you. Yeah. His new book is called Long Way Home. He paints a portrait of a childhood looking out at adults with intoxicating substances. The pulse of their ambition and flirtation, and very few rules. That's Jack Nicholson, Warren Beatty, Gregory Peck. They're at his parents' wedding. Michael Douglas, age 32, his mother, a 19-year-old diplomat's daughter, Deandra. She's still attending college classes. Cameron writes about the little boy who looked up adoringly at his very young mother who was a little lost in Hollywood. An exotic, fragile beauty suddenly raising a child and finding strange comfort in keeping wild animals in the house. A monkey that would bite and... A leopard-like wildcat and illegal to own in about half of the 50 states. But at night, he says, she would turn on the music and the two of them would dance with air instruments, laughing until she soothed him to sleep. She would do a whole little concert, you know, it would be on the flute, sometimes a hi-hat. What is a hi-hat hiss? When you hear people play the drums, yeah. and you hear like the kick, that's like the boom. The hi-hat is a tss, oh. boom, tss. And softies. And softies, yes. Which were just? Just stroking my, my back. I used to love them, I used to ask for them. <laughs> My father would administer softies, too. He might not admit it, but... <laughs> so when in the life of a happy child does something begin to go wrong? 
His father's career has exploded. You tell my wife, I'll kill you. Provocative hit? You're in over your head. Maybe. But this is how I'll catch my killer. After provocative hit. Well, well, well. Long stretches away from home. I try to be as supportive as possible. He got me at a young age, so he sort of broke me in the right <laughs> way. Now, hopefully, it'll take like three or four months off. Do you believe this is going to happen, Deandra? Not really. <laughs> in his book, Cameron says his young mother was looking for her life. I think she had a difficult time uh, finding her way. She took to going away on her own adventures, sometimes for weeks at a time. And everyone had read those rumors. Eight years into the marriage, mom learned that dad was having a fling. He says when he is seven years old, his mother tells him about her anguish. She says to you, he's with somebody else. What are we going to do? It's a lot of responsibility at seven years old. You would cry yourself to sleep, according to a friend. Really? Binge eating. That You were really struggling as a little kid. He's 13 years old when he's sent off to boarding school and writes of his homesickness and how dad's racy movies are getting him bullied. No, no, no. I'm starting to catch some more flack from basic instinct. <laughs> yeah. He tries to muscle up wrestling like his famous grandfather. He tries to hit hard in football, which gets the attention of his dad, who says... He's a tough little kid. I loved hearing him say that. But he writes, inside, the insecurity remains. When he tries marijuana, he says he feels the pressure lift. And he finds a path out of loneliness, joining up with other kids using drugs. I think just trying to test myself on a regular basis. To prove you belonged in this hierarchy of Douglas men? I think sub subconsciously. He's kicked out of boarding schools, comes back home where he joins up with a menacing group of kids who call themselves the Sewer Rats. I usually had a buck knife or a switchblade I'd be coming at you with a rock. The drugs there are cocaine and crystal meth. He says he sets out to become the crazy white boy, the bully of bullies, which makes him a kind of star. My father used to call me the king of the <laughs> So maybe I felt entitled as a king of the I don't know. His parents are alarmed. There are wilderness camps, juvenile facilities, even Hazelton Rehab. We count you will be in and out of rehabs 11 times before you're in your mid-20s. They didn't work. Why did nothing work? Because I wasn't ready to change. Do you blame your parents? No. Is there some, an ounce of blame? There are millions and millions of, of little kids that have it way worse off than that little kid did. So it's just everybody's dealt a hand, and it's, and it's how, we, how we play the hand, you know. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.